Hi friends, very welcome to my Vanitar. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the load's inrush current. The inrush current phenomenon is also known as the switch on surge. So I have prepared this test setting to show you the inrush current and my proposed solution. Alright, this guy is a windscreen wiper DC motor. This one is a shunt resistor. I hooked the channel volume probe to that to measure the voltage. And this is a power supply which provides around 12 volts. When I connect the power, just look at this current consumption and this CC LED even without using oscilloscope. Look at here. Bingo, did you see that? Sudden increase and then a fixed current consumption. Even this DC motor shakes on the table when I just connect the power. Look at here. Did you see the movement? Alright, now what I'm gonna do is to adjust the oscilloscope to measure the current here also. This one should be set on DC coupling. Other parameters are okay, 20 MHz bandwidth and times 10 probe. So let's connect the power and we can expect this noisy readings because actually the load is a DC motor. Let me play with the trigger and time division knobs. You see the noise in the wave and I saw the fluctuation in the frequency counter value. If you carefully look at the screen, you can see this offset value which is in proportion with the uh, current consumption of the load. So let me go to the measure and add the RMS value, okay? Uh, so RMS is on the screen. The measured RMS value is almost identical with what we can see on the power supply screen because actually the shunt is a 1 ohm resistor. Alright, now is the time to show you the inrush current spike on the oscilloscope screen. For this purpose, I have to use the single shot feature of the oscilloscope, I mean this button. So now I'm gonna enable the single shot feature and play with the trigger and the volt division and time division to capture the spike correctly. Let's connect the power. Bingo! Do you see the spike? I have to play with the volt division and time division more to capture the whole wave. Okay, the time division, this 100 millisecond should be okay. Let's play with the trigger, re enable the single shot, connect the power, and bingo. The spike of the inrush current and its descent is pretty clear. Uh, so let me disconnect the power and play with the time division to capture more details of the wave. So let me connect the power again and wait for the results. Okay, Bob's your uncle. The long spike of the inrush current and its descent to the CD state current is pretty clear. Now I wanna enable the cursors to measure the length of this uh, spike. I expect to be more than three at least. Let me go up, go up. I should fine tune this upper cursor to make the reading as accurate as possible. So as it says, it's around 3.3. So 3.3 volts with the one ohm shunt resistor, it means 3.3 amps. And this descent to the steady state current, uh, uh, let me, Come, uh, come uh, uh, move the cursor and confirm this steady state current as it says it's around 1 amp or 950 or 60 milliamp which confirms the current consumption reading on the power supply to solve this problem i have introduced two designs one for the ac loads and another one for the dc loads this one is for the ac loads that uh, that uses a transformerless supply and this one designed for the DC loads. I will explain both designs in the next step, so stay tuned. Okay, this is the PCB board of the AC soft starter. As you can see, it is a single layer PCB board. And all component packages are deep. Pretty easy for everyone, even the beginners, to build this circuit. As usual, I used the Symaxis component libraries for this design also. I used it for Q1 and BR1. 
Altium Designer is my favorite CAD software, so I use the Sumaxis Altium plugin to install the libraries. This is a 3D view of the board and this picture shows the first prototype of the design. You can see the power resistor, relay, uh, capacitors, bridge rectifiers and others. For the schematic diagram and more details, please check the video description and reference links. Alright, this PCB board uh, belongs to the DC soft starter circuit. The same as the previous design, uh, it is a single layer PCB board. Uh, all component packages are deep and pretty easy to build. Here also, I got the help from the Symaxis component libraries and installed the Q1 schematic symbol and PCB footprint using the Altium CAT plugin. Another option is to download the libraries from the component search engine.com for free of course. This picture shows a 3D view of the assembled PCB board. And finally this picture shows the first prototype of the DC soft starter. For the schematic and more details please check the video description. Okay friends welcome back. As you can see on the table, now I have included the DC soft starter to show you the difference. I have connected the input to the, to the supply and output to the load. The shunt resistor, channel 1, probe, everything is identical. Even I have not touched the cursor's position to show you the difference. Now I'm gonna short circuit the switch wires on the terminal to resemble the turn on. That's not a good capture, let me turn on the single shot again and make another try bingo that's perfect bob's your uncle do you see the previous cursor position now i'm gonna move the cursor to the new top so let me move the cursor to the new position and bingo you can see the difference 1.9 volts so this is the effect of the soft starter in the captured waveform the second jump is the relay activation and this descent is the delay of course you can modify the power resistor value to increase or decrease the current limit. I had an intention to show you the effect of using this AC soft starter also, but because I don't have a differential probe, so I can't set up a proper experiment using the oscilloscope. Anyway friends, I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to share and subscribe. Also give me a big thumbs up. Catch you next time.